Welcome to Nerf and Turf. I'm Andrew, and on today's episode of Nerf and Turf, we're going to be talking about zombies. So I recently had um, a battle day with some of my friends where we all got together at this house and we played zombies in this house. It was a two-story house and then you could climb from the second story onto the roof and then get down. And so you could essentially build loops. So it was the ideal place to play zombies. We had so much fun. And as we played and as I'm watching, I, I picked up on some stuff and I figured out which blasters I enjoyed the most and which ones I saw as the most effective during the zombies game. So today, we're gonna talk about that. Now in the world of Nerf, zombies can take various forms. Um, the game we played, I, we call Infection. So what happens is you pass out cards to everybody and one person is the zombie. And so I gave that person a Joker. And so the person that drew the Joker is the zombie. So once the game started, I would count down. And then after I count down, the zombie it has a blaster like everybody else. And they're pretending they're a real person. Until 60 seconds into the game, they're required to drop their blaster and start tagging people. And the initial zombie, if he gets shot with a nerf dart, he um, is dead for about 10 seconds, and then he can respawn, or 10 seconds is his cooldown rate is the other way to put it. And then every subsequent person that he tags that becomes a zombie, their cooldown rate is gonna be 30 seconds. That way it's like a, a perk to be the original zombie, whereas the other zombies, they have a little less of a perk. They're still immortal, but they still die and then have to wait 30 seconds to come back. Um, if that kind of makes sense. So I've got some videos that are about to come out about that. I think I've already posted one and I'm planning to post some more in the upcoming weeks as I edit them. But it was it was quite a fun evening of zombies and trouble in Terrace Town. And so I brought I had brought all my basic spring blasters there just to make it as simple as possible because I noticed spring blasters seem to be the best blasters, in my opinion, for um, infected or zombies or trouble in Terrace Town, what have you. And so I'm going to be discussing that idea today. And I'm going to start off with the strong arm. Now, a lot of people, it's a very standard blaster. It's a six dart um, revolver that you can pop the little um, cylinder out, put your six darts in there. You can spin it and put it in just because you feel really cool doing that. And I've got my um, pistol hollow sight on here, you know, just for that extra accuracy bonus. And then over here, I have um, some water bottles you might recognize from some other YouTube channel. What a weirdo. Anyway, so my goal is to shoot these with the different blasters I have, and I'm just gonna talk you through the pros and the cons as to why I enjoy these blasters, um, the perks of these blasters, and then the drawbacks on these blasters. So this is six starts. It is slam fire, so as long as I'm holding down the trigger, I can pull on this. And so with um, HVZ or any zombie type game, you don't want a very powerful blaster because you don't want to hurt the people you're playing with because most likely they're going to be at close quarters because I'm not going to waste start shooting a zombie that's very far from me when I know that once he's close, I can just peg him. So it's more risky because he's closer to you, but you don't want to waste darts. And so it's that epic um, toss up. So I personally did use my strong arm when I was playing zombies. It was my um, secondary and so I, ha I was carrying this at all times when I had a semi-auto or a fully auto blaster. So in case it jammed or anything I knew I had a spring powered blaster ready to go. So let's see how this goes. So that's the first three darts I missed obviously. Um, and so those are three controlled shots. So as a zombie would run up, I could take an easy shot at him. Really, that would be, honestly, that's a little far when I was playing HVZ the other day. If a zombie was that far, I was still waiting until he got about two or three feet closer because I didn't want to waste any darts because I was generally one of the last survivors in that game. And so I'm running on very low darts near the end of that game. So now I'm going to slam fire the last three and let's see what happens there. So I still missed all the water bottles. Um, but yeah, it's a very handy, useful secondary for if everything hits the fan and it's really sad. All right, we're gonna fire off six more darts with a strong arm before we switch to the next blaster. Oh, I used the sight and then I hit it. Wow, it's like the sight does something. Accuracy bonus. So yeah, 
So that's the backup Maverick. Again, um, no, it's not the best primary because six starts isn't always going to be enough, but it's the really great secondary for when everything goes bad or your, your primary's broken out of darts, you just get a quick six shots off as you're reloading your main blaster. So that is the strong arm. Very high recommendation on this for zombies play. And next here I have my Dart Zone Magnum, which isn't a Nerf blaster, it's an off-brander, but it is a fantastic blaster. Although I didn't use this blaster at my last HVZ event, when my primary had run out of darts and I was the last survivor, and I'm sprinting around dodging zombies and I'm out of darts, somebody, the zombie, who, or a person who had turned zombie had dropped theirs, and I picked up this Magnum and this lasted me the rest of the game um, because it's an open cylinder that contains 40 darts, which is fantastic capacity for a spring-powered blaster without magazines or anything. And the really nice thing about this is I can have darts in the chamber ready to fire and be loading at the same time. So I'm running around shooting zombies and picking up darts and loading as I go. So this honestly might have been my favorite blaster. I'll show you my actual primary from my HVC event, but this blaster ended up saving my life in a fictional world where I shot zombies with Nerf guns. Anyway, so this blaster is fantastic because again, very much like the Maverick, it's a um, slam fire. So I can hold the trigger down and just let foam spew. Um, the problem with it is it's not really a sidearm so, or a secondary, so you can't really holster this kind of blaster in any possible way. So it is your primary, but you do have 40 darts ready to go, open cylinder, which makes it fantastic for zombies play. Um, and it's also shooting 90 feet per second, which can hurt if you're too close to somebody. I think I gave Tobias a bloody lip with either this or my strife. I don't know, and I apologize. But um, yeah, this blaster was quite fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot at those targets and let's see what happens. And so that's me shooting single fire and now I'm going to, you can't really aim like that when you're doing slam fire so you're kind of shooting from the hip but again when you're shooting zombies and you're really close all you're doing is shooting from the hip so let's go. So yeah, that's that. Um, I think I got a little dirt in it from my last war in my backyard. So I'm gonna clean that out and fix out that slam fire function. But as you can see, it's a fantastic primary. I think right there I shot through about 15, 20 darts, just super fast because all you really need is hold down that trigger and let it go. The other problem is there's no air restrictor. So it's really, really loud. Okay, now that's the last spring blaster I'm going to show you. Next, I'm going to go to an electric blaster. No, there we go. Cool. So what I have here is the strife that I used at the HVZ event that I hosted recently. And so this is my strife that has a 42 millimeter crush cage in there, standard flywheel, standard motors, um, two IMRs in it. It's got my the flash hider thing on the front that's wide enough that it's not going to get in the darts way, but it still looks really cool. Um, I've got my small iron sight and then a front foregrip attached to it. So this is the one I used at the war recently, um, and it, it was fantastic. It was quiet um, because the motors aren't upgraded, and so it's still getting a quiet sound out of it. But man, this thing, it was um, accurate. It I don't, this thing never jammed on me. I hadn't thought about that because I had also used a hyperfire that night and that thing jammed. I love fully automatic blasters. They're very useful, but when they but they jam a lot. And when it jams, I'm out of blaster. And that was the time where I had my strong arm and my hyperfire and I'm laying down um, lanes of foam taking out zombies and then it jammed. And then I just had to drop and go straight for the strong arm. So I was so glad I had the strong arm that day. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot that milk bottle because that's the only thing standing up there. So again, two IMRs, um, and I never really shot until they were very close to me, and I could just take the mag out, recap it off as I put another mag in. Um, so that's the problem with magazines, is once the mag's out, I can't shoot anything. So that's why the Magnum was beautiful, because you can be loading up as you're firing. So that's the very useful part of that. Did this just jam? It didn't 
Okay, no, it didn't jam. I think it was the mag had an issue, so let's try that again. Man, after I gave it all this praise about never jamming, it just jammed on me? This is a sad moment in my life. What am I doing with my life? So that's 18 darts shot out of there. Um, believe it or not, it wasn't a jam. I don't know what it was, but the pusher mech just wasn't shoving the dart on through. But when I had my HVZ event, it didn't fail me. Um, I had no jams, I had no malfunctions. It was so effective, it was so efficient, until my mags were out of darts and I didn't have time when I had 12 zombies chasing me down to you know stop and reload a mag. So that's when I picked up the Magnum and then just played Scavenger the rest of the game. <laughs> All right, now let's try another mag here. And that's how you knock a milk carton over. Cha-ching. And so the other thing about the crush cages is when you're firing a waffle head or an AccuFake or an AccuStrike dart through there, um, it doesn't compress it as well as it does a Nerf um, Elite dart. And so that might have been the issue I was dealing with was it getting bogged down in there as it ejected it um, with a first mag. And so that was my HVZ primary. Again, I wasn't expecting to use a flywheel. I thought I would be trusting a Springer. But um, at the end of the day, this is what I pulled out. Um, and for some reason, I just really wanted to trust it. And my trust wasn't in vain. It did me really well that night. I would essentially wait till a zombie was about as far as that tree is from me right there. And then I would just light him up as he got near to me. So now those are my main zombie primaries. Now, however, I'm gonna show you a bonus entry that I didn't use at the war because it was an indoor war and it was HVZ and I like people. So let me show you that. All right, so here I have my Strife with my Fanger revamps in here. And so I've just got my simple um, compressor here on the front, pistol sight. Um, it's got a stock cage, but it has um, finger revamps up here and then in the battery pack I have three IMRs um, so this is about to be extremely loud um, and that's why I don't use this for HVZ events is it's so loud the zombies are gonna hear you but uh, on top of that the, the bigger reason I don't use it is it's shooting so hard I don't want to hurt my friends I like my friends um, and I want them to play with me um, and it would be really sad if I hurt them and we couldn't play zombies anymore. Um, and so this is the other one. For these, I don't put stocks or anything on my strifes, mainly because I'm not shouldering for accuracy. I'm running. And um, when you're running, you don't want to stock. So I'm just sprinting around with my blasters, picking up darts as I'm running from zombies, waiting until they're five feet away. And then, well, I'm going to rev this thing up and you're going to see why it's so loud. <laughs> So that's a little loud. <laughs> All right, let's try to take out some targets, shall we? So that was loud. And I still have darts left and I shot everything over. So the FPS coming out of there is just so hot. And um, I don't know if you noticed, but the motors didn't bog down at all. Even if I was firing at a pretty fast rate of fire, the RPMs in the motors weren't dropping at all. And so that's why the um, new motors in here, these Fanger revamps are so fantastic, is that um, you can keep up a very high rate of fire and they won't bog down. However, they are incredibly loud. Now the fear with um, IMRs is that you could pull the power out of them much too fast. And so that's why I check them periodically to make sure they're not overheating or they're not expanding and they're doing just fine right now. Because um, if the motors pull out too much energy out of those batteries, they're gonna overheat, explode, fire, destruction, police, lawsuit, all of the above. And so you gotta check that out if you're using aftermarket motors with IMRs. That's generally why aftermarket motors are used with 2S or 3S LiPos because um, they're a little safer in that regard. And I'm planning to move up to a LiPo pretty soon because man, I didn't think I would love these um, finger revamps as much as I did, but I love these things. <laughs> Holy cow, that's loud. So my plan is eventually is to put a crush kit as well with these finger revamps. And those things are just gonna scream and hurt really bad. So I'm gonna fire off a couple more of these. Well, that was loud. 
Um, so that was the last bonus round blaster that I was going to show you. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video and just seeing my view on HVC, what blasters I suggest. Again, um, that was a strong arm, high praise for a secondary for if your primary goes out. And then the Magnum, because it's an open cylinder that you can quickly and easily refill. That's a dart zone blaster. I think you can find it at Target for about 20 bucks still. Um, so fantastic deal. And it carries 40 darts. And that's, that's fantastic. It's a pistol, but I still use it as a primary. And then my Strife. But again, I don't suggest using aftermarket motors with three IMRs, because um, that's like 10 or 11 volts right there. I don't want to do math. But that's, that's a lot of volts, and that's a lot of pain, and I like my friends. Um, so avoid that. So if you're going to use IMRs, just use two. Um, you don't need that much power. You don't need to be hurting people. The goal of zombies isn't to be hurting. It's just to have a blaster that's consistently going to fire. And my other strife with just the crush kit, with the stock motors and just two IMRs, that did it. Um, if anyone was within 10 feet of me, I basically always hit them within one to two darts. And that was all I needed. Um, whereas this thing I would use more for a PvP, so a player versus player battle, because it's getting really hard hits, it's going to go distance, and it's going to be somewhat accurate, so I can take somebody out with that. And right here, this is more of my close quarter combat setup, and I would put that foregrip I have on my other strife on here, and totally wreck some people with this. So that's the plan for some stuff in the future, but that's going to be more of a PvP, where they're shooting back at me, not a poor zombie whose goal is to come touch me, and that means he's going to be right next to me, and you don't want to be pegging somebody in the face with a high-powered blaster. Um, that's just that's just poor sportsmanship. And so just keep an eye out for that. Yeah, but that's it. Comment below um, what blaster you use for HVZ. Or if you've ever done an HVZ event, let me know where it's at. I'm trying to figure out how to set up some more of those here in the DFW area. And I know some people are trying to get it going in Letourneau. So, yeah, just let me know. All right, so get on out there, nerf your turf, and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.